good. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Brock Williams. I am a resident, actually, of District 7. Um, I wanted to say that I moved here about six years ago with my wife um, with, and my two kids, and we quickly fell in love with this city. Um, I grew up in a small town in West Texas. Um, a lot of people don't get out of it, as a matter of fact. Um, soccer gave me the opportunity to not only get out of that small town, it got me out of the state, it's, getting, it's gotten me out of the country, and it's let me see things around the world that I would have never gotten the chance to see if it hadn't have been for that for, for this sport. Um, so, as an Austin City Council member asked a question a few weeks ago, does Austin want soccer or not? The city has shown for months it wants soccer. Hundreds have shown up to community engagement meetings, council meetings, press conferences. We were one of the largest markets for the international, uh, or we were one of the largest markets for the World Cup, one of the largest markets for international league viewership, and have one of the highest percentages of participation in regards to adult soccer leagues. Um, instead of having us support other cities' teams, we ask you to give us the opportunity to focus that, that passion back into this city. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Nazer. Hello. You got a letter today from the Watershed Protection Department which told you that there was no critical water feature on this site. And that may be true. It depends on how you de uh, define critical water feature. But there, uh, let me just show you what is on this site. Okay, this is a, uh, uh, can we go back? This is a big, large cottonwood tree, uh, and there's more than that. It's on there right now, and who knows what will happen to it when it gets developed. Next. Here's water. Here's cattails. Here's willows. Okay, next. There's, uh, you can see how this land goes. It's not even. Uh, it's very interesting what's growing where. There's more large cottonwood trees. Next. Red winged blackbirds that only breed in wetland areas. Next. Scissor tail fly catcher. There's not many of them left in North Austin anymore. Next. Uh, this is another one, kingbird. Uh, Western kingbird used to be more common than it is now. Next. Doves, morning doves, which are going away. Next. Why don't you go? You need to uh, and, and here's the water that's still in the creek that's been mowed up there. There's water up there. Thank you. Introduce yourself, sir. And then you have one minute. Hi, my name is Laquan Rogers. Um, I'm the sole proprietor of a company called Get Fit With Me. I've been trying to put it out there for the last three years, but... Since I've been doing it, people have been robbing me, stealing my car, just doing all types of things. But I've still been holding my own, trying to be peaceful about it because where I'm from, we retaliate. We don't play. But I'm not trying to go there because that's not how I am. I'm a man of peace. I just want to see kids grow up in a community that's going to be uplifting to them. So. I'm just asking if you guys will partner with me because I like what, I, what I'm hearing in here. If we put some of y'all's ideas and my ideas together, I believe we'll have an ultimate plan that can make a lot of change nationwide. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Introduce yourself, please. All right. It's Danny Woodfill. I'm sorry? Danny Woodfill. Yes. I'm the general manager of FC Austin Elite. That is the women's soccer team here in the Austin area, and we've been here for four years. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were actually forced out of the city of Austin due to lack of a place to play. There's no place for even a second division women's soccer team like us to play here in Austin. There's nowhere to share that joy. There are three thriving girls soccer programs they do a good job. We do a good job in Austin of producing girls soccer teams. Girls soccer players, they go to college every year from three, not one, three big programs, Lone Star, Sting, and the Austin Texans, all produce players. In this deal, we need a place to play soccer. We don't need a new girls soccer academy. We don't need another girls soccer team. We need a place to play soccer. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, is um, Ian uh, Zerzolo here? Okay, is Michael Costello here? No, you have one minute. Is Don, is Dan Conrad here? Come on down, you'll have a minute. Is Ralph Solis here? 
Ralph Solis, you have a minute to come on down. Is David Zavaleta here? David Zavaleta? No? What about uh, Ray uh, Costello? Ray Costello? No? Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Ian Zorzolo. I'm a resident of District 3. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of false equivalency here. A lot of the opponents for the proposal say we need to bring affordable housing. We need to work on public infrastructure like transportation. Just because we're bringing a soccer team doesn't mean we can't do that. I work on a lot of, I work on a lot of civic engagement in this city nationally, and uh, I've got my business cards here with my contact information. Councilmember Poole, everyone else that is skeptical of this proposal, I will work with you on affordable housing in this city. I'm sure all of my supporters here are also super, uh, you know, in support of, of that initiative as well. So, you know, let's, let's embrace this opportunity. We can also work on these other huge issues for the city. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. You have one minute. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dan Conrad. Um, I originally come from Columbus, um, from actually a, a fairly low socioeconomic family. Um, was fortunate enough to get a soccer scholarship to play in college. That is how I got my education. Um, I've seen the benefits of soccer, getting to play with players from all over the world. Um, first thing I did when I moved to Austin was get involved in the soccer program here. It's where I met most of my friends. I mean, you saw all the people that came up when Derek spoke. We're a community. This is what brings people together, I would just implore you to please vote yes on 19 tonight and bring Austin soccer. Thank you. Introduce yourself, you have one minute. I'm Ralph Solis, uh, District 2. Uh, one thing that we don't talk about, this just being a pro uh, sports team here, something that a pro sport team that can do. Austin is, has, is, a, is a city that has the largest per capita, per square mile, per whatever, of nonprofits in the city. There's no other organization besides a central healthcare system, besides a handful of them here in Austin that can instantly impact every one of your districts by helping those non-for-profits, by helping the veterans, by helping adults and children with disabilities, by helping uh, underprivileged kids. You're talking about having a, a development with a thousand affordable houses. You can have somebody instantly subsidize 10,000 kids to play soccer and that's going to cut people's uh, rents in half, right? Because they're, these kids, are, these parents are paying to play soccer. There's nothing like what you guys can do as far as bringing an organization here and leveraging that. It's all of a sudden become leveraging soccer and affordable housing. Let's just leverage soccer. Uh, I'm pro MLS. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Ray Costello. I'm uh, pro MLS. A lot of people touched on a lot of good points. I'm not going to take too much of your time. Soccer's evolved in the city of Austin from Zirka Park having a league, getting moved out to William & Cannon. So there's not a lot of spots for us to watch soccer or even play. So I love soccer. So hopefully we can end this quick and just vote for it and move forward. Thank you. You guys want to come on up? What's your names? Um, I'm Caden Delk. This is my brother, Chase Delk. Um, we're pro MLS. Um, we believe that Austin, Texas should bring the Columbus Crew MLS team to our city because Austin is one of the most rapidly growing cities in America and is still increasing in population. Austin does not yet have any form of professional sports team um, while other big cities in Texas do, um, including the Dallas Cowboys football team, the Houston Astros baseball team, the uh, San Antonio Spurs basketball team, etc. cetera. Um, it will generate more happiness and income for Austin as we can bring friends and family to a game, make profit off of the sales of food and drinks, tickets and merchandise. And it's, it's just a big sport, it's growing. Um, the popularity of soccer in America has greatly increased in the past 30 years. And if we create an MLS team for Austin, Texas. It will inspire and bring passion to many kids and adults from Austin. Um, Good job. Help us bring MLS to ATX. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, introduce yourself. My name is Jeff Shaw, and I am the principal Nike rep in the state of Texas. Um, I work with every major professional sports team in the state of Texas. I have reps all through the south. I also live just across uh, Town Lake right here. Um, there's only two teams that I don't work with, and those are the two current MLS teams here uh, in Texas because that's all Adidas. So you should know this is nothing to me business-wise. This is all about branding and who we are as a city. I spent the summer with my family traveling because of the MLS, I mean because of the World Cup in Spain, Portugal, and France. And there is nothing that would build the global brand of Austin like what we're talking about here. Right? It's not about just, these guys have told you a million things on how it's going to improve all the, the, the soccer lives of all the children coming up. But I'm talking about the global brand that is Austin, Texas. This is a perfect fit for us. Soccer is the perfect fit. I mean, Barcelona, those kind of places, it, it's just the right vibe. It's who we are. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. I sent you all an email. Feel free to reach out. Thank you both. Bernadette. Ian Zerzolo, Ralph Solis, David Zavaleta, Ray Castello, Trey Bush, uh, Roderick Mercado, Kelly Worthen, David Wasser, Rashab Desai. Come on down, guys. Come on up to the podium, introduce yourself, and you can get started. One minute. My name is Dave Wasser. I live in District 9 and Kitchens District. I'm a former consultant to the U.S. Soccer Federation. I know I've got very limited time, so I'll try to be brief. You know, I keep hearing people say, it's not about soccer. It's not about soccer. I don't like it because of this, or I don't like it because of that. Let's be real here. It is about soccer. Of course it is. I mean, look, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like professional sports, I can understand why you would oppose this. But you should accept that lots of people do. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean... And then the deal that Precourt Sports Ventures has come to with Austin, it's, maybe it's not perfect, but don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. It's a good deal. And, you know, if you're holding out for perfection, you're never going to get something that's perfect. But we can get something that's good. And um, I know my time is limited. I, I just want to say, you know, an opportunity like this will not come along again probably for several decades. If, if we turn this down, MLS is going to go somewhere else. Pre-court will probably go to Sacramento or who knows where. That's my time. Please vote yes. Thank you. Why don't you go introduce your name and then you have one minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. My name is Kelly Worthen. I live in Cedar Park, just a stone's throw away from the Austin City Limit. I want to provide you a unique perspective. I actually have worked in the front office for two professional soccer teams. So I want to kind of outline some of the things that have popped up on the term sheet here uh, and the negotiations that have gone on for the last six weeks. We have an investor that wants to invest north of a quarter of a billion dollars in our city for a building and property he'll never own. That belongs to Austin. That belongs to us. He even agreed to cover construction overages if needed. PSV listened to Austinites and is providing green space and affordable housing on that site as well in addition to a stadium. PSV is willing to pay rent up front to kickstart local initiatives. PSV will pay more than its fair share in taxes on each ticket sold, on every piece of merchandise sold, as well as payroll taxes for multi-million dollar, multi-year contracts. This will provide employment for hundreds of people from construction to front office to game day staff, as well as providing overtime opportunities for first responders. Thank you very I much. I urge you to vote yes tonight. Thank you very much. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. You have one minute. Hey there, I'm Rod Mercado. I, um, I uh, spoke before on June 26th. Um, I work for Dell. I went to UT. I am a coach at Town & Country uh, Soccer Club. Um, there was a lot of discussion, I'm very quick. There was a lot of discussion earlier about how McCalla is the hole in the donut. A hole in the donut that, by the way, has sat dormant for more than two decades without any serious conversation about an RFP. So the question becomes, do we fill that donut hole with something that fills the families of this city with a sense of pride wherever they go, whereas with a sense of feeling of, 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 of inclusion, of, of all of those great things, or do we fill it with more condos? with more stores and more traffic, with more commuters coming in and out of that space that, as many people have already suggested, on both sides is congested every single day of the, of the year. Even some of the speakers against 19 have talked about the passion for soccer and city pride. You won't see that for another mixed-use development. 
I look to one side of the room wearing scarves and caps, and I look to the other side, and I don't see one shirt that says Dense Urban Center. I don't see one, one, one advocate there that is saying, we want this. I urge you from this point on, continue to work with uh, PSV and uh, MLS2HX. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Introduce yourself. You have one minute. Hello, my name is Trey Boucher. I live in District 9 and I support Item 19. My wife's from Argentina and has lived over here for 15 plus years now. We have two kids, 11 and 7. They both speak Spanish. They're fluent and speak it at home. But when we go out in public, they don't speak it. And one reason why is we just don't hear Spanish. We don't see the diversity that our city has unless you're on the other side of I-35. I think it's time that we do an initiative that brings east to west, brings it together, something that we could all get behind. And I think this is something that would be great for the kids. So if you don't know which way to vote, vote for the kids. You won't see any kids up here asking for another Jamba Juice. Let's bring soccer to Austin for the kids. Hey, I am Rishabh Desai. Um, I'm from District 3, and um, I'd like to say um, I've worked with uh, Leslie Poole uh, at a, as a part of Austin uh, 350.org. Um, she's been great there. So um, let's, you know, let's uh, lay off of Leslie Poole as uh, MLS supporters. Um, but what I'd like to also say is uh, I've lived in Austin for seven years. I've um, I went to Macomb School of Business, and I know a little bit about finance. Now, the reason property taxes are excluded is because <laughs> it, it's, it's a financing. It's, it's, it's part of the financing structure of the stadium. What, what that means is it's bringing a lot more revenue in. It's a false equivalency, like someone rightly pointed out, to say, oh, we should build affordable housing there, and instead of building, the stadi in, in, you know, instead of building a stadium, you can build affordable housing in a lot of other places. You can build a stadium. In, in most places here. So let's, um, let's support MLS. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Is Lee Nichols here? Is uh, Don Lewis here? Don Lewis? What about uh, Raquel Alvarez? Uh, Jonas uh, Nwame? Jonas Nwame? Marcus Whitfield? Mitch Wright. Let's do this group. Go ahead. You have one minute. Introduce yourself, please. My name is Lee Nichols. I am the vice president of North Austin Soccer Alliance. I live in District 7. Um, we are a recreational uh, youth soccer league. Uh, if uh, soccer comes to McCalla Place, we will be the neighborhood youth soccer league for McCalla Place. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that in 36 years of existence, NASA has never turned away a kid for inability to pay. And I sat down with uh, PSV, and they said, I said, you know, if you want to use this land, you've got to do something for you sports. And they said, what do you want? And I said, I want some improvements to our fields, and I want you to help us make sure that we can continue to serve kids who cannot afford to pay with scholarships. And they didn't blink. They said, you've got it. I believe this is going to be a great deal for the kids that, and the families that my organization serves. It's going to be a good deal for Austin, and I welcome uh, this, and I encourage you to support item 19. Thank you. Mayor? Uh, yes. Really quick, I wanted to I ask Mr. Nichols a really quick question, because Lee, you and I have talked about this, and, the, and I've, I raised the issue of whether Precor had talked with any of the local recreational and youth soccer team, uh, groups in town, and I had specifically talked about NASA, because mm -hmm. you and I had talked about this before, and I was interested in making sure that if something should happen at McCalla, that your group especially would be part, but would be one of the groups that would benefit from it. I still don't have anything in writing that commits PSV and MLS to supporting you in the ways that you've discussed. I am happy to hear that you have had those conversations. I would like to get those in writing. I want the commitments in writing. And I think what would be best is the comments that you made here today, if you could put them down in writing and get Mr. Precourt to sign off on them, then we would have something that is, we could maybe even include in some of our city documentation to make, 
to provide assurances that the promises that are being made will come true. That has been one of my chief concerns about the term sheet and the promises coming from PSV, specifically Mr. Precor, is there... I. I'm trying really hard to find certainty and predictability and enforcement. And this is a perfect example of where I think it might be missing. You have a word, the word, but it's not in writing. So um, I would ask the two of you to, to work on that and uh, see if we could get the commitments from Precor signed, sealed, and delivered. Councilmember Poole, I agree. I would like to have it in writing, but I would point out that uh, in the agreement that was worked out with city staff, I, if I remember correctly, there was uh, $75,000 for youth sports scholarships. Um, I'll be frank, even if NASA isn't included in that, if, if that's if that seventy five thousand dollars is going to get some kids somewhere in the city on a soccer field or a baseball field or whatever, I'm good with that. I hope it I was, understand I hope that, it was that and I and I appreciate North I, Austin Soccer Alliance. Mayor, yeah, thank you. Yes, and I just wanted to ask folks to to refrain. That's great, and I don't disagree. The point uh, is, though, that I was looking for commitments on the fee, the practice and the playing fields which is what you and I had talked about. So I wanted to, I wanted to um, back up the conversations that I had with you with certainty from my end. And that's the piece that so far is missing. So you don't have to respond to that. I'm just drawing that out as a specific example of what I have been trying to get and have not yet gotten. So maybe, maybe you can help me. I appreciate you that. holding PSV's feet to the fire. That's, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Council members, Marcus Whitfield, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I've been here since 1984. I played soccer for 20 years. This process was flawed from the get-go, it sure seems like to me. Um, we asked to do an environmental on the property. We were not given permission. We gave proposals on Tuesday. Mr. Cronk was not at that meeting, but he's negotiating with the pre-court, so he doesn't know our proposals. I'm not sure how that works. Um, where was pre-court at any community meeting? Never saw him once. Saw a lot of these soccer shirts that they paid five bucks for, but they're gonna pay $50 for a ticket. That seems a little bit disingenuous when you gotta pay 50 bucks for a ticket, but we're basically giving you a t-shirt to, to put it out there. We need affordable housing, we need wellness. There's things in this community that already long time ago were established by the Imagine Austin plan. Lots of plans have been developed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sir. Introduce yourself and you have one minute. Okay. Good evening, council members. My name is Jonas Weme. I attend Texas A&M University. I'm class of 2016. Whoop. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll say change is inevitable and I know that change can um, bring a little bit of like, uh, make people scared. Um, soccer is one thing that I can attest to growing up. I played soccer my whole life. Um, while I was at A&M, I had the privilege to create a soccer organization that brought people together. And that's one thing that soccer is known to do. And apart from the, pa apart from the, fa apart from the fact that kids love soccer and people, there's a lot of opportunity for Austin as a city to generate revenue. We have companies, lots of companies that can, uh, I even interned when I was in Seattle. I lived in Seattle for quite some time. They have teams, they have organizations sending people, their, their co-workers to, to watch games and the atmosphere that it creates, it's, it, it, could be, it, it, it could create a lot of the revenue and um, just a, it would bring people together. And I, I, I stand for MLS at Macau. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Mitch Wright. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council, for hearing all the comments, uh, especially from us that are wishing that you would uh, vote no on item 19. Um, everybody loves soccer. That's not said enough. We want soccer in this city, but consider, would you go out and buy a pair of shoes that are two sizes too small for your feet? I don't think so, even if they're glittery. It's not a right fit. That soccer stadium and all of the ancillary things that need to be there to support it don't fit on the McCullough site. There are plenty of sites all over the city that the city owns 
uh, that can fit that site, and they've been offered those sites. So I don't even understand why it's gotten this far in the discussions about McCalla. Um, it's been said a thousand times that affordable housing is in critical need here, and multiple proposals have shown that that is a great site for mixed-use development to include a lot of affordable housing. I think that that is a wonderful thing. It's supported by the neighborhood groups. The soccer deal is not supported by the neighborhood groups in that area. So uh, please consider that. Vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody else here that's signed up to speak that I haven't called? The applicant, uh, Richard Suttles, is he here? Is he the applicant? Isn't he a representative? Representative. I mean, it's not a zoning case. He's, he's, he's a principal or represents a principal. I was going to give him five minutes. He's not here. If he comes in, we'll give it to him. Uh, that takes us up to the, to the dais. Mayor Pro Tem, do you want to make a motion? Mayor, I'm still working on amendments, so I'll, okay. I'm happy for someone else to. Discussion on the dais on this issue? Mr. Flanagan? Uh, I don't know if, there are, if there's a more pointed representative that can speak to the youth, the women's academy or the girls' academy question. Um, I know we had a person who's a coach from that program speak, but I'd, I'd like to hear more about whoever the official representative of what that relationship's going to look like. So whoever Probably that is, come down to the microphone. <laughs> yes, sir. So introduce yourself. My name is Buck Backus. I'm the president. Right, right, right into the microphone. There you go. I'm the president of the Lone Star Soccer Association. So can you help me understand um, what, what the relationship looks like between you and what's being contemplated here? Was my concern is that we want to have uh, gender equality in everything that we do at the city. It's part of our non-discrimination ordinances. It's, uh, in fact, I am in a, a minority on this own council. So um, I, I'd like to hear more about that. So I was real pleased to hear Mr. Nichols. Excuse me, I was real pleased to hear Mr. Nichols speak, and he spoke about the commitment that uh, PSV made to NASA, and I'm in 100% support of that. That's precisely the same kind of support and commitment that we've heard from PSV from day one. I have met with uh, Mr. Precourt, I've met with Mr. Greeley, I've met with their organization on a number of times. We have a binding written agreement with PSV, and it is a binding written agreement to support our development academy and specifically the Girls Development Academy. It is going to support our East Austin initiatives and it is going to support what is called our Women's Premier Soccer League. And that is a, uh, that is a special league that is for college athletes and aspiring pro athletes former pro athletes like Jackie Pope that you saw tonight. They've agreed to underwrite that program. And I will tell you that uh, the soccer world is a crazy world. Um, Are you familiar with the building you're in right now? It's pretty crazy me? in here too. <laughs> <laughs> good point, good point. Um, and it, it is a fast moving environment. And uh, there was a change in the presidency of U.S. soccer just a few months ago. So as you can imagine, that's trickled down through the organization and it's trickled down through the Development Academy. There is a bifurcation that took place in May of just this year. That bifurcation separated the DA into two categories. There is now a pro DA and there is an amateur DA. So and DA stands for? Development Academy. Development Academy. So the pro DA teams will be the MLS teams. The amateur DA teams will be teams like Lone Star. So that you understand the, the, what Lone Star has is we are the only development academy 
in Austin, Texas. In fact, the closest one is 162 miles away in Houston, Texas. So there's one in, there are a couple in Houston and a couple in Dallas. So we have the we have the rights that are difficult to earn. They're based upon a whole lot of of, of information that goes into determining that. And so we have been awarded the Development Academy by the U.S. Soccer Federation, okay? And PSV has vigorously agreed to support our Development Academy, specifically the Girls Development Academy. Do you, do you uh, are you just in Austin, is that what you said? So we're, we're in central Texas, so okay. we're, we're pretty far north and pretty far south, but, um, and I'll speak to our mission and our vision. There are, in, in youth soccer, there are clubs that uh, the Dallas Texans might have um, clubs in, in other uh, states. Our mission is to only be in central Texas. That's what we want to be. We want to be, we are one of the largest youth sports organizations in the country. We're one of the most successful youth sports organizations in the country. I think we do it very, very well. Um, and I will, the, the one piece that, the pro piece is called the tip of the pyramid. And there's what's termed as the development pyramid. And at the bottom is recreational soccer. I'm sorry. You know, I, I think I could, you could probably talk for hours. So yes, sir. I'd, I'd like to talk to, to the young woman behind you if she wants to come up back to the microphone, because I think if we're going to talk about programs for, for girls and women, we should talk to women. So why don't you tell me, tell me about your experience with this program? So I actually grew up in Austin, and I actually played for Lone Star growing up. So homegrown, and I also got to play for the club. Um, when I was done, obviously, getting my degree and playing professionally and with the national team, I've come back, and now I get to coach all the little girls from U10 all the way to U13 in the club. How many, and, and, and just, just succinctly, do you, do you find that this program has provided opportunities to the, to the girls that participate in it? Absolutely. Not only um, just in everyday living, I think we focus on soccer, but for me it's also helping these girls understand that their dreams can come true. Um, they can dream, and it can all obviously come true. And if you think about on the flip side is Lone Star also has a college program, and so every single player gets the opportunity to try to get in college. And... Um, I think every year we at least put 200 to 300 kids in college every single year with our programs. Thank you. That, that's all I have, Mayor. That's all I have on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm not sure if this question is for you, but um, I appreciate that you have been promised in a binding agreement support, but how much money is in that support? They're giving $36 million to an academy. Is that all going to the pro academy? And I'm not, again, I'm not sure if this is you. How much are they giving to you? And then I'd like to hear from someone representing pre court how much is going to boys and how much is going to girls. How much have they promised you as part of this binding agreement? How much money? Is that well, part of the respect, binding? It, it's a proprietary agreement between us and PSV, and I'm, I'm happy to speak about the spirit of the agreement. But uh, terms like that, I, I don't feel like that's something that I should speak about. Okay. Um, then I'd like to ask the question to pre-court, unless Ms. Kitchen's question no, is for ahead. the same gentleman. May, I, I don't know which representative from Mr. Pre-court um, PSV would like to address this. Good evening, Mr. Suttle. I'm Richard Suttle. I'm ha here on behalf of pre-court. I, I, I would like to know, there's a $36 million, I think, is the new number over the 20 years that is being invested in a... I can't, I'm sorry, can you... There is $36 million that is supposedly being invested in an academy over 20 years. Is that for the pro academy or is that for the amateur? Well, you have the youth academy. You know what the number is we have in the youth academy, which is the boys, which caused the problem. Right, so the boys are getting $36 million. I want to know how much money there's is being devoted to girls. There's a program girls. required by the league Yes. that is the, that academy. Okay, but you're counting that as a community benefit. It is Okay, so take it off. Okay, I will take it off. Okay. But I still want to know how much is going to the girls. 
and I will tell you that we have an agreement with, pre, with, with Lone Star, and they're not interested in negotiating their term sheet in this arena, and it's proprietary, and I'm, I'm bound by them to honor that. Okay, but you have camps, you have other things. What portion of the amount of community benefits that's going to support youth development is going to boys? What portion of what? You have uh, several different categories of youth, various youth development academies. And we have academies millions of dollars in this community benefit package that are going to both boys and girls and to soccer. And what you've heard tonight is that the folks out here are not as hung up on boys and girls and community benefits as you are. And they and don't have a vote up here, we do. I and understand. so we have a right to ask you whatever questions that we need in order to be okay. able to so do Council that. Council Member Alter, here is my. Council Member You Alter. get to vote for any one of us if you're our district. Yes, that's hang, true. Hang on, Council hang Member on, Alter. hang on. Richard, please answer. Lone questions. Star and Precorp have an agreement. They are not interested in publicly fleshing out their agreement here tonight. And that's all I can tell you. I'm sorry. So there's no way that we can get an answer of how much of the proportion of money that's going to support soccer youth will go to girls in our community. I'm telling you that I'm not at liberty to disclose the agreement between Lone Star and Preport. I'm going to let other colleagues respond Mayor. beyond that. Mayor? Mayor? Mr. Settle? So on the list um, that you've provided of community benefits that relate to youth programs, are those all independent of, loan, of your agreement with Lone Star? Yes. So those are all in addition to the agreement you have with Lone Star? Yes. Can you provide us with any information that would be more specific, such as the number of girls who would be part of the academy, over what period of time, at what level, whether they would be um, have to be income eligible girls, or what some of the other criteria would be? Let me I mean, I guess, my and, maybe, and maybe we could give you time to talk with Lone Star about that, but I do think it's important to get some sense of what benefit is being provided, what benefit is being provided to girls. Give me one level. second. So do you want... Do you want me to go through just the soccer programs or the all the benefits for youth? Because we don't break them down so many for girls and so many for boys. Yeah, no, I'm really trying to get, I guess I'm trying to see whether, so I think what I heard you just say is your agreement with Lone Star has nothing to do with this sheet in, in that when you have identified the number of scholarships for, for soccer camps and things of that sort, that's completely that is separate. in addition to your agreement with Lone Star. So now I was just trying to ask questions about, I'm just trying to sense whether there's anything you can tell us about your arrangement with Lone Star that would help us understand how many, how many young women might benefit from that partnership. So how many, can you tell us how many students, I, at what I, level? I really, I really can't because Lone Star operates, has operated their Girls Academy. We heard loud and clear that in our community benefits, we're, we are counting the, the MLS mandated academy for boys as part of the community benefits. And it's a big, it was a huge part of it. If you take that out, we still have tens of millions of dollars in benefits for boys and girls soccer programs. And I, one of the speakers, I, I didn't see who it was, but I overheard it's, it's like, um, if you're getting kids on the fields and getting them to play soccer, that is what is important. And we don't delineate, except for the one, the MLS mandated academy, we don't delineate between boys and girls. It all, it's, all, it's all both. And I believe, I don't have it in front of me, but I can, I can get it. I believe I provided uh, at some point somebody a list of how many boys and girls are on these programs. And I know um, you and I have talked about language that could be added to that sheet to make it clear that those other programs are yes. open and, and at the appropriate time. We can talk about that, but and it's I don't know how, I mean, I guess we're all circling around the same question. Can you, 
Well, what you're can you asking and, us to do is you're asking Star... us to disclose an agreement we have between two private parties, and we're not prepared to do that. I guess I'm just trying to determine whether there's anything about that partnership you can you can disclose that would provide us with a sense of I can some tell sense you of, of how many young women in this community would benefit from I can tell you from that, MLS's presence here in the city of Austin at that level. Well, I can tell you that, and, and Lone Star should tell you this, but I'll reiterate it: they are extremely happy with the arrangement that we have, and I think. I think that is reiterated and, and extremely happy with the impact that that will have on their women or their girls academy. As this relationship develops, I, I think it will benefit every, every girl in our club. And so it's, it's important. We have recreational players, we have division two players, and we have players all the way up to the development academy. The way the relationship is styled is to benefit all of those kids. And there, there is one other point that I need to make because I think it's very, very important. The, the special nature of the relationship with PSV deals with the development academy, okay? But as it gets below the development academy, D1, Super 2, D2, and recreational soccer, there is no exclusive relationship with PSV. And PSV insisted upon that, and Lone Star enthusiastically supports that. Because we want PSB to help out Lee Nichols at NASA in Georgetown and Lake Travis and Millennium and so forth. So that's the nature of the agreement, and I, I think it will help all of the kids. Excuse me, Mayor. Could, could you ask Mr. Bacchus to more, talk into the piece. mic? I can barely hear him. One more talk. piece that's not in the term sheet, but Precord is currently doing a feasibility study. On, and I'll get you help me, NWSL? NWSL. And would that be a program that would be welcomed in Austin if it were to come here? Oh, absolutely. So NWSL is the next level up for women's soccer. You, 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 you enter into an agreement with a Lone Star and that helps the feasibility of bringing more women's sports and more women's soccer to Austin. And that is, that is what we're building up to. It's not something we can build into the term sheet but it is yet another benefit that emanates from MLS coming to Austin. Thanks. I'll be a little bit cocky. I think they'll have an NWSL team in, in, in the next- You need to talk into the microphone. I'm sorry. I, I think there's a lot of reasons to have an NWSL team, and I, and I think that they will get there in the next five years. <coughs> so I, you know, we're gonna, drill down into this one part of the deal or another part of the deal before we do start drilling down at a, at a, at a higher level. There, there are so many things that are going right in this city, and we all recognize those things. But there are also things in this city that are not going right. They're the things that we have to work on. And we spend a lot of time working on those. One of those is affordable housing. And goodness knows we spend a lot of time working on affordable housing, and we and we and we uh, extract and 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 we and we push for uh, incentives to get people to give us affordable housing, and we do that a lot, and we should because it's a really high priority. We do a lot in this city with respect to mobility, and we spend a lot of time on that, and a lot of bond work, a lot of staff work. And it's good that we do that. One of the challenges we have in this city is homelessness, and we spend a lot of time and resources against that too because we want to work on that. Not everything we do in the city helps us with affordable housing and mobility and homelessness because sometimes we focus on one thing or two things as we try to make the city a better city. One of the problems that this city has is that it, we know that it's one of the most segregated cities in the country. You just, you know, you, you go to, to restaurants in this city and you, you look around and the people in the restaurant will primarily, usually, primarily, in most restaurants, primarily be one group of people. You go into meetings in this city and look around the people that are in the meetings in the city and it is, generally speaking, another 
gathering of, of one group of people. We don't have very many events in this city that bring everybody in this city together, where people in different walks of life are next to each other and, and equal and sharing together. That's what, that's what this can represent for this city. That's the, for me, that's the community benefit and value of this in the city. And that's a huge thing and a huge value for a city that I think is in desperate need of something like this. That doesn't mean that we're not interested in affordable housing or in homelessness or in transportation or in transit or in any of these other things. It just means that not everything has to solve all of our problems. This is a really unique opportunity. So I look at the deal that's been struck here and I look at it compared to to, to similar deals that are being arranged all over the country, and this one is better than those. I, I, commend, I commend the manager and the staff in, in the time and the work to, to get us to what is a pretty unique place and a pretty incredible deal for a wonderful benefit, and quite frankly, a needed benefit for this city. But it, but it feels as if the goal line keeps getting moved. It feels as if we're, we're going to be asking this to solve all of our problems. And, and my concern is, is that in trying to get all of that, we will lose what is the key benefit. Now, the women's soccer here is an example, and, and quite frankly, I, I think that the problem was in the way that you presented this. You presented as a community benefit a development league that's required of you by Major League Soccer. Now, it's true that that provides a considerable benefit to the community. That development league, for the people that be able to participate in it, the families that are involved, the hopes and dreams and the aspirations, it provides a significant community benefit. But the problem was with that, that it's part of being a major league soccer team that you provide that. So it gets built into the economics of the deal, and it becomes part of that deal. I don't know what your deal is with Mr. Bacchus, but I'd be willing to bet it's not $37 million. And if it was $37 million, then we would hear about it. But if it's anything less than $37 million, then you're not giving to that what you were giving to the guys' development league. But you're never going to give 30 because it's not part of that deal. So while that is something that's going to provide significant community benefit, maybe it's best that that just be left off the ledger. And talk about what you're doing for the tens of millions of dollars that you're putting in soccer for fields for everybody in this city and for teams for everybody in this city and just focus and count on those. And don't count that benefit for the community from the men's league, and don't count the benefit that comes from lining this city up for the ability to be able to get closer to having a major league women's team, or the fact that it makes it that much closer to us being able to get the women's uh, development league, because that's uncertain, and that's not part of this deal. So look, don't, don't count that either. This, this, the deal when you look at this on a piece of property that was not used for so long and has now become the most desirable track in the city <laughs> can only do so much for the city. And sometimes we take pieces of land like the ones that the library is under and we say, that has a really unique benefit for this city, even though we could sell it for, for trillions. That's where we need a library or the land under the Performing Arts Center, which was uniquely suited for that use. We getting, if we do this deal, for me, a tremendous benefit for this community and a benefit that is not just nice for this community to have. It is a benefit that this community sorely, sorely needs. <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, okay, so I have a few questions too. Um, I, I would like to say, as an overarching, um, just an overarching thing, that that I, I do uh, support bringing soccer. I think it's a great benefit for the city. I think there's a lot of intangibles to it, and we've heard a lot of those tonight. So I would just want to say that up front. Um, I don't think it is inappropriate for me to ask questions because um, I have a duty to understand what is in the term sheet. That does not mean that I don't support soccer. So, um, and so there's some due diligence that needs to occur, particularly since, as we all know, this is a complicated deal. We're being asked to negotiate and execute. That means it doesn't come back to us. That means that we have a duty to understand what's in here. I can tell you I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think that there's, uh, a, I think there's a lot of benefits here. Um, and many of you have pointed out what those are. Uh, but we need to understand what the cost and the risk are to the city. And that's what my questions have been uh, geared to. I'd also like to say that I think it's appropriate to ask how women and girls can participate in the opportunity of the soccer stadium. And I want to say that the fact that MLS focuses on boys is not, doesn't mean that we should ignore and not ask questions about girls. You know, there's been traditional, in sports, there's been traditional lack of attention and dollars and resources paid to women's sports. And I think it's incumbent as a public policy for us to ask those questions. And it doesn't mean that I am going to do a ledger that says you have to do exactly the same amount for women, for girls and for boys, but it means I can ask that question. And it really disturbs me that the answer is we can't know. And so, So I, I just have to say that because when I, you know, when my colleagues ask that question, it's not necessarily that we're saying, okay, if you don't do exactly the same amount, that it's not, that we're going to throw the whole deal away. But we have a responsibility as, as women elected leaders to do what we can when it's appropriate to, to address inequities. So Mayor. I, I understand that you all have a, an... You have agreed not to share information, so you've made that very clear. So, but I think asking the question is appropriate and just encourage you to tell us what you can. I'm the father of two daughters. I get it. I also get and that's, by the way, I have no sons, so I really get it. We blundered when we put the MLS required academy as a community benefit. It is a community benefit. I don't back away from that because 124 boys get to go there. But we, you know, it's required and it's a lot of money and it funnels into a male professional team. But thank you for bringing it to our attention because frankly, we didn't even think about it. And we, and we thought, we, we thought it, was, it was a good thing for our city and, it's, and it, yeah, it's for the guys because it's for the guys' professional team. But what it did do, and this is what you all ought to be proud of, is, is it made us go, oh, boy, did we blow that? And we didn't even think about it. And we immediately reached out, we researched development academies, and we researched women's soccer, and we found the experts. And let me tell you, I know more about development academies and the soccer hierarchy than I ever dreamed I'd ever know, and I'll probably forget it all. But what I did find out was, what are the needs for girls soccer? And we addressed them in our agreement with Lone Star. And that is a huge plus. And it's because you all ask questions, and I thank you for that. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, and we'll probably just not agree. 
I don't understand why the public can't know what that kind of arrangement is. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so the thing about the agreement with Lone Star, just to kind of give my couple of two bits on this, is so folks came in here to talk to us about it, but we didn't find out until toward the end of the discussion that it was a private agreement. Okay, so for us to be asking information about what was included in that is, is um, a pretty standard ask. But then you tell us toward the end of the discussion, oh, well, we can't give you when it starts getting down to the specifics. Well, we can't tell you because it's proprietary. So that was, um, so that's kind of how that played out. Um, I do have an email from some of the parents who have their kids at Lone Star s Soccer and they asked me to check on a couple of things here. Um, our, and it goes to Lone Star Soccer and the city soccer team is there. Uh, and I realize this is, actually, I, I think I'm not going to ask this question. I want to stay on the terms in the term sheet. But there was some concern about how things were being presented about Lone Star Soccer that they didn't necessarily either know about or have agreed to. So I'll just, I'll just put that out there. Um, so I do have a question about youth teams and the stadium. We've been talking a lot about development academies and scholarships, and my hope that there would be actual money to some of the local athletic clubs, the youth and the men's and the women's soccer teams, the recreational teams, to get some funding to help with their playing fields and their practice fields. But let's talk about youth teams and youth and the stadium. How often will the youth teams be able to play at the stadium? So I see Mr. Suttle there, and I see some other folks with MLS who could probably come up and talk to us from the term sheet or just from conversations. How often will the youth in the city of Austin be able to play on the fields in the stadium? So there's one field in the stadium. It is a professional-grade pitch, and I'm proud of myself. I know now. It's, it's, Mayor, are you getting ready to turn the filter on me? <laughs> um, it, it's a professional grade field, and right now there are no number of times that the youth can go out there and play, but I can tell you that that pitch has to be, remain in pristine condition for professional players. So we don't have a number on how many teams. You've seen how fields, if you play on it every day, it has to have time to rest, it has to have time to grow, and we don't have a number. But we, in our community benefits package, maybe the, maybe the kids' teams aren't actually playing on there. Maybe they're having clinics. Maybe they're getting to come out and, um, and just hang out on it. But there's no set times that the clubs will be able to come play on the professional pitch. But we, in our community benefits package, we have money set aside for rehabbing other fields that the clubs can play on. Good. And I'd like to see what those are specifically. And I'm also glad that you clarified that, in fact, the youth in the city wouldn't be able to play in the stadium. I didn't say I that. I didn't say that. I said that we can't tell you a number and what, what type of play they can have on there because we don't know yet. That'll be, that can be in the definitive agreement or, they could, or the clubs can be playing where they like to play and where we will help rehab their fields. The point that I'm making that you are helping me to make, and I appreciate that, is that we don't know, and there may be a misapprehension in the community among the, the youth here, especially they may think that they may be able to play some of their games on the field. And now, they might. And they might. Well, but that's great. But, uh, so maybe term, we can, Mr. Level, Suttle, maybe we can then clarify that and, and nail it down in the term sheets. Well, so in the term sheets, you, you, you designate broad concepts and you get the terms that are important to the city for a term sheet. Now, I, I, Council Member Poole, you've made it clear in the media, you're not for this deal anyway, so I'm not sure. Mr. Suttle, I, I am trying to improve the deal to get it to a place where I might actually be able to vote okay. for it because my job on the council is to do the best deal for the city of Austin, not the best deal for soccer. And you know that too. And you know that's why 
I am holding the line as, as strongly as I am. And I'm also speaking for a considerable number of people who may or may not be in the room here today. Well, 